Now, am I telling you to run out and buy everything at the store and everything else tomorrow? No, I'm not. But I'm telling you, you need to start somewhere. Okay, so if you go to ready.gov, it's going to pull up this page. And in there, it lists everything from a snowstorm to a hurricane, tsunami, nuclear war. Uh, you name it, it's listed in there. And they tell you how to prepare for this. Now, why is it that they can't tell us really what is going on? And you've got a lot of people out here. They have no clue what is going on. They have nothing. A lot of these countries have turned around and they have sent mailers out to all their people. Millions of these things on what to do, how to prepare, what you need to be thinking about. And yet our government has done nothing. And if it wasn't such a big deal, then why are all these countries that are overseas in Europe beefing up their military? They're beefing up ammunition, all their men, they're beefing up bunkers. They're going through, they're evaluating their bunkers. They're seeing what their bunkers need. If they need repair, they're refixing them. If they need stock, they're stocking them. I, I've got uh, several different comments on a video I did the other day. And um, I've also got a few emails where people are telling me that in their area, there are no longer any bunkers left. So where does that leave us? The government isn't really telling us the truth and it's all smoke and mirrors. They want to make it look like nothing will ever happen to us because we live in America. If something happens, somebody's going to be going after first any type of nuclear defense if they can sneak something in and try to take something out. I'm not in a good position, but at this point in time, I'm stuck here. I'm going to post this in the comments in the description below so everybody can see it. You go to defconlevel.com, all one word. You go right there and they give you what your defcon level is. That goes right along with the question is, why is it that all these other countries are being warned and being told, listen, all right, this could happen. You need to be prepared for you and your family. The big misconception of this whole thing with a catastrophic event, as in a nuclear or whatever, the dead zone, as I call it, all right, wherever the bomb drops within so many mile range, depending on the size of the bomb, obviously, yes, you're not going to survive unless you're in a real deep bunker somewhere or something like that. But the chances of survival are very, very slim. I'm explaining to you what takes place because some people just don't know. So you have the nuclear fallout that follows through the air. Whichever way the wind's blowing, that's where it's going to go. That is what can kill you in a slow, agonizing death. Usually it happens within two to three weeks. Your whole system just slowly keeps shutting down and you go through this incredible, painful time in your life when you just wish you were dead and you're not. So that is why I'm going to sit here. I'm going to tell you what you people out there in America or anybody that is listening, because I know there are people on here from all over, things that you can do to be prepared for this particular situation. Now, we all know about having your food. You got to make sure that you have water. You have to make sure that at that point in time, if you know that something is going to take place or that the catastrophic event has been launched, you need to try to secure the water you can at that given time. Plenty of first aid and everything else. You have backup on certain types of items, gauzes and bandages. And probably you want to make sure that you have burn cream to get a decent mask. Now, I'm not talking about a COVID mask. You all know what I'm talking about. That may be something if you live in a high populated area like New York City, uh, Los Angeles. If you live in one of these kind of cities or if you live close to one of the major Air Force bases, maybe something you may want to think about. Secondly, to secure your home, if you're not in that dead zone that I talked about, you want to make sure that you do have plastic 
and you want to make sure that you have a shit ton of duct tape because you can use the plastic to put on your windows on the inside, especially if you're in a older home. The newer homes, the windows are pretty secure. I would almost still do it just for the security of trying to keep out as much as I possibly can to keep my family. Safe. I would highly suggest if it came down to that one particular scenario where the catastrophic event is going to happen is to use spray foam around your door because you don't want anything seeping in and the spray foam sets up pretty much instantly. You want to make sure that you do have one room in your house, if possible, that doesn't have any doors, windows, or anything like that, that you could use as a safe haven. One of the main reasons the government isn't telling us anything or telling us to prepare is we'll know just before it happens. For one, I don't think they really want to freak us out either because you know a lot of people would freak out. You think March of 2020 was bad? When uh, Charlie Victor 19 hit, there wouldn't be nothing left in the store. People were probably just going in and start stealing. And you probably have all these people trying to steal all this stuff that ain't gonna save your life. Oh yeah, let me grab that big screen TV. Yeah, okay, you go right ahead and you do that. But you really have to sit back. You have to make a plan. That's why I'm very big on making a plan. A plan covers you under any type of an emergency. And that plan is executed for any type of emergency type situation. That plan is there for you and your family to fall back on if something happens in a catastrophic event. Everybody in your family needs to know what that plan is. Everybody needs to know what their part is in playing out in this plan. It's up to every individual person out there what they want to do with the information that I have been sharing. Because the question still stands is, why is the government not telling us to prepare? Why do they not want us to be ready? Why is it that they don't see fit to try to take care of or warn the American people here? I guarantee you that they're going to be very well taken care of. They just spent $300 million on basically nuclear drugs. Now, you can go out and you can buy your own. I'm not a doctor, so don't hold me to that. You guys can do whatever you can. I'm just giving you a little bit of information on what you could do. If that was the case, then why did we have the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis and we had bunkers and we had Geiger calendars and we had masks, we had suits, we had stuff in bunkers. I've been to one. My old school that I went to years ago had a bunker in it. It had food and water and the whole nine yards was in this thing. Seen it with my own eyes. And for you that have been following me for a very long time, or even just a short period of time, you know that for a fact. It's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, the reason I talk about the things, and the reason I tell people things, and I do some of these videos and everything else, is because I generally care about all of you out there so that you can be prepared. Oh my. Now, my good explanation on why you need to be a prepper you see, because there's a lot of animals that are like that. We all need to be prepared. We have to make sure that we are doing our part. Because in the end, folks, the government's not telling us what's going on and telling us to prepare for a reason. I don't exactly know what that reason is, but it should be a huge red flag to all the Americans that are watching this. What do I need to do to offset whatever they have planned. That's the question because they're not going to tell us nothing until it's too late.